So, Monique, first of all, I just have to ask how you've been experiencing uh, the last few days, the last now few weeks as these protests have continued across the country and, and more of these, you know, simply devastating incidents have happened uh, in part as a result. What's your, what's your take? You know, I think for any black person um, in America, especially, uh, it's it's been a wave of emotion of you know anger, sadness, and now you know protesting and starting to have activity around fixing the issues. And so I think it's been it's been a roller coaster for many of us. And you know now with the the most recent Rayshard Brooks um, murder in Atlanta, I think it's it's just thrusting us right back to the place where we started when we were, you know, seeing George Floyd and Breonna Taylor's murders. Um, so I think it's it's a very emotional time for a lot of us. Um, you know, fortunately, I think what's different about this time is that there are people who are outside of the black community who are actually paying attention um, and who are on the on the front lines or protesting with us. Now, there have been so many conversations happening inside companies, inside investment firms, how to address this, what can we do differently, what are we doing wrong. As a result of that, we've seen certain venture capital firms like Andreessen and Horowitz, SoftBank doubling down, saying they're, you know, recommitting to black founders, setting aside some, some money. You've come out and said that black entrepreneurs, quote unquote, don't need a separate water fountain. What do you mean by that? So I think with a lot of funds, and full disclosure, I say this as an advisor to SoftBank on, on a lot of their um, ongoing programming, including Emerge, the accelerator for underrepresented uh, entrepreneurs. But I, I'm seeing so many funds say, OK, we are putting aside a separate pool of capital when they do have an existing pool of capital. So I think it's, it's twofold. It's one, you have to start by understanding what um, is keeping black founders out of your existing pipeline. And then two, if it's a stage issue, um, like it may be with, with SoftBank and to some extent Andreessen, if it's a stage issue, really understanding how you can um, start to partner with, with founders early and get them into that early part of the pipeline with some capital, with some access to networks, and really work with founders at the very earliest stages in order to to um, help them succeed. Because there are great founders out there, there are pools of capital that they can be invested in from. And if you're not actively doing that, then there's something wrong with your pipeline. And so as an investor, I say that you have to fix that. Talk to us about your own path to venture capital, uh, the challenges that you faced and how that might be a window into what other, you know, aspiring investors and entrepreneurs might be facing in Silicon Valley today? So I moved to San Francisco in 2008, which is which was a interesting and auspicious time to uh, move to move to Silicon Valley. But I came in as an entrepreneur and it almost immediately noticed that I was going to all these demo days and I was going to getting into all these rooms and I would not see very many other black entrepreneurs in the room with me but I was very sure that they existed. And so my friends and I started uh, Black Founders, a community of founders, because it was really trying to solve our own problem of having access to, um, to Silicon Valley, having access to investors, but also creating a support system that we felt wasn't there for us. And we started Black Founders in 2011, and unfortunately, it's taken until now to, to have the conversation come to some sort of head where a lot of people are paying attention. Um, I moved on to the investor side of the table around 2013 or 14 because I knew that all the ecosystem building that we did with Black founders, all the advising um, entrepreneurs was, was going for nothing when they still had to go to Sand Hill Road and face the, the same sort of uphill battle toward getting you know a, even a first round of funding done. Um, uh, you know, with venture capital investors who didn't look like them and who often couldn't understand their, the businesses that they were building and who were often, you know, in some cases, downright condescending about their businesses. Um, and so that was really my reason for moving on to the investor side of the table. And I did that at 500 Startups, did a lot of investing there, and then decided to leave 500 Startups and start a new fund of my own because I think that it takes 
um, people who have investing experience and who are able to step out and create an entirely new fund with new culture in order to change the root causes of some of the disparities between black entrepreneurs and their white peers. Now, your fund, Cake Ventures, is in part your philosophy is being driven by some of the demographic shifts that you expect to see. The fact that there will be more uh, minorities than you know the white majority in the United States not too long from now. Talk to us about the strategic bets that you're making in terms of where you're putting your money to get ahead of some of these shifts that other investors may not be paying attention to. So I firmly believe that other investors are asleep at the wheel on some of the big demographic changes that are changing technology. And they're going to be at a disadvantage. Um, one of the big ones is the shift to majority minority where people of color will become the majority in the United States. And if you're building a global company, um, people of color are, are already a global majority. Um, and you know, you you see that in you know the the popularity of platforms like TikTok and Instagram, and the popularity of Black Twitter on Twitter, you know, the main platform, and you know those groups save, spend, use use the internet. They do all of these things differently. And if you're going to um, really invest in the next wave of big consumer groups, that's who you should be investing in. Um, you know, you're also seeing women being able to drive companies to um, to unicorn status. So companies like Rent the Runway, Glossier, The Real Real, all got to unicorn status based on the economic activity of a mostly female user base. Now you're going to start to see that in other categories as well. And then finally, the final layer of the cake for me is this massive aging population that we have. So a lot of investors are not really paying attention to these big demographic shifts that are happening. Um, they're, you know, they're investing in the same old thing that they always have. And I think that as these demographic shifts come to a head, they're going to be slightly behind the ball on taking advantage of and, and getting into some of the hottest deals that are come, going to come to Silicon Valley.